Okay, so I wanted to start with another quote from our Rise Weekend that stuck out to me. Every piece of your journey is a chance to level up. So every new step of your journey is another chance for you guys to level up, which is so huge because we all look at the negative. We all look at what we're going through and focus on, sorry if you can hear the dog chewing her bone, but she's content, which is great. Um, we all focus on that part of it, but we don't focus on what we can learn from that. We don't focus on what lesson this could teach us, what we can grow, what we can kind of figure out about ourselves or our business or whatever it is while we're going through that. So that I just thought was really cool. Um, you guys might not know this about me. I'm super red, which we all know. I have super duper travel anxiety. Like I don't travel with any new people. I only room with certain people who I already know. I don't travel without my husband. It's like a really weird thing for me. Like I will not like share hotels with people when we go away. It's like Lovick and I, and if you're coming with us, you get your own freaking room. Like it's bad. So when we were going to rise and there was someone in the house that I didn't know, I was like, sweet Jesus, this is going to be so bad. I'm never going to make it. This is four days in a house with a stranger. I was like packing all the Xanax, like trying to get my whole life together. Like I was freaking out guys. <laughs> like it's kind of ridiculous how freaked out I get about it. So it turns out Bevan was like the sweetest woman we've ever met in our whole lives. And there was nothing to be a whole psychopath about. It was really cool to see her side of things and just have somebody new that we just really clicked with right away, which is always a weird experience for me because it doesn't happen often for me. Um, and Bevan actually came all the way from Southern California, you guys, to go to Rise with us in, not with us, but to go to Rise in South Carolina. So that was huge. So I wanted to have her hop on with us tonight and share kind of her takeaways as well just so that you guys can hear from somebody else that was kind of there in all the excitement of it and someone else's point of view. So I'm going to unmute Bevan, let her tell you a little bit about herself and what she thought of Rise as soon as I can figure out. You should, oh. got it. Yay. <laughs> Well, Chelsea, I did not know that about you. And <laughs> and to think that we ended up in the room together by ourselves um, was, was pretty cool. So right. I'm sharing that. Um, so yes, like Chelsea said, I came from Southern California to go to that event just because I knew um, I knew what it was gonna do for me and my business. Um, this past Tuesday was six years for me that I have been with It Works, and I promised myself I wasn't going to cry, but my journey is, I've had a lot, a lot of life happen, um, especially the last two years, including cancer. Um, so with that said... <clears throat> I have made every possible mistake that you can make. And um, I, I think the overall takeaway from Rise was that you have to make mistakes. And if you don't, if you aren't making mistakes, you're just not gonna grow and you're not gonna learn. <clears throat> um, my, my biggest takeaway from Rachel specifically was that being an entrepreneur is hard. It's really hard. It's not just with our business in particular, it's not just signing up a few customers and then you make $5,000 a month. Like that's just not how it works. And um, it's not the same for everybody. And you have to do what works for you. You have to try a million different things. Like for me, for example, host of posts don't work. Um, I've tried them over and over and over again, and I will still try them, but I don't have great success with them. Parties work for me. I have really good, um, I have a really good closing rate on parties. I'm much better in person. So I think that specifically with um, everything that we learned from Rachel, I think that you have to always remain coachable. You know, we, we are never at the top of our game. You have to stay relevant. You have to 
Um, you have to always be ahead of the next curve. Like for example, um, I'm gonna use Facebook stories as an example. Like a year ago, I don't really even know, to be honest with you, how long they have really been a thing because I just started posting to my stories a couple months ago. And <clears throat> you know, I've learned that there are people that I'm friends with that only look at stories and there are people that I'm friends with that never look at stories. So you have to always kind of do a little bit of everything. Um, I think that another takeaway from her was that you have to also honor where you're at right now. Like you have gotten to where you are right now because of the things that you have learned up until this point. You're not at your next level yet because you haven't learned to be at that level yet. Um, <clears throat> I think that you also have to be super vulnerable and with my, um, I don't like to use the word journey, but my adventure the last couple of years, I've been real vulnerable and um, people relate to that. Like you guys have to be real and you have to be authentic and you have to post a crappy picture once in a while that doesn't have all these filters and all of this, you know, beautiful photography. Don't get me wrong. There's a time and a place for that, but that isn't, you know, there's a meme floating around on Facebook that says something like, um, you know, you have to stop using filters because if you go missing, people aren't going to know what you look like. And to be honest, I've had people, I've run into people at Target that they have to tell me their name because I don't recognize them because they don't look like any of the pictures that they post. So you have to be relatable. Um, my, my second favorite speaker at Rise was Brendan Burchard. And um, he a lot of what he said really, really resonated with me. And I don't know if Chelsea, if you guys have already talked about this, but, um, and this, this definitely applies to me specifically because <clears throat> he talked a lot about stop wasting your life, like stop, um, stop. I'm going to try on Monday or I'm going to try tomorrow or, you know, I'm going to wait until and until doesn't always come. You know, we all make excuses. You have to be who you want to be now and not later. Um, and the, the other thing that I'm going to read literally out of my notebook, he talked a lot about these um, six points. The first one was seek clarity. Like you have to really, you have to have a very, very clear vision on what it is that you want. And if you, and, and I'll talk a little bit later about my experience this past weekend, but one of my distributors, you know, she's, she's not clear on what she wants and therefore achieving a goal isn't, is going to be extra hard, if not, um, unattainable, if you don't know exactly what it is that you want, <coughs> excuse me. Um, the other thing that he talked about was generating energy. And, you know, I think it's real easy, especially in our business, to sit behind your phone or sit behind your keyboard and have that be your entire existence. And I think that, you know, we have to, we have to be responsible for the energy that we're putting out. Um, his third point was raise necessity. Um, if it's necessary for you to succeed, then you have to be on your A game. You have to be excellent at your tasks that are gonna get you there. Um, he talked about obviously increasing productivity and developing influence. You have to be yourself, you have to be honest, you have to be truthful, you have to do your best to take care of the people that you're trying to influence, right? So we're all, we're all trying to hopefully add value to somebody's life by either our products or our opportunity or even just things that we're posting. So take, take really good care of that and, you know, treat it as, as a commodity because um, if you, 
are frivolous with it, you're not going to get the results that you're looking for. Um, and he also talked about demonstrating courage. You have to be, um, be a good listener. He talked about cheering people on, you know, um, oftentimes we aren't the best cheerleaders that we can be, you know, our, our distributors <clears throat> that are on our team are doing the tasks that we ask them to do or that we encourage them to do. And, you know, it doesn't take a whole lot of effort to tell them that they're doing a great job or, you know, that you just appreciate them. You know, that that's a simple thing. Everybody likes to hear that they're appreciated. Um, that was really all I have about those because I could go on for days and days and days about that. Did you want me, Chelsea, to talk about my cruise? Yeah, definitely. I was going to ask you about that because I'm curious about it too. Okay. So <clears throat> I'm sure you guys are all familiar with Carla Burns and Denise Walsh. So they have for three years now, <coughs> excuse me, done a Disney cruise to the Bahamas. And this was my second time going on it. And um, Carla specifically is very, very, very much into Disney and the magic of Disney and how so many things um, that they have to offer, we can really incorporate into our lives. Um, she believes that we should approach everything, everything in your entire day, your life, everything with childlike faith, right? So imagine that you are five years old going to Disneyland or Disney World for the first time. Everything is magical. Everything is, you know, you're in awe over everything that she truly lives her life that way. Um, <clears throat> something that they have had us do for uh, both of these trips that I've been on is uh, last year they called it something different. Last year they called it come as you will be party. And what that was, was choose a, choose a goal that you want to accomplish. It could be something that you want to do. It could be something that somewhere you want to have traveled or, you know, start a family, buy a house, whatever it is, something that you want to have solidified within the next five years. And we had to come to dinner dressed as though dressed with props, whether it be a costume or an outfit or whatever, um, as if you have already achieved that. Last year, my goal was um, where I I'm in California and <coughs> sorry, I got a little bug on the cruise, but um, my husband and I want to buy a cabin in the mountains a couple hours away from us. So what I did last year was I got blank keys and um, a keychain, and I brought them to dinner and the whole idea is that you, you choose your five-year goal and then you reverse engineer yourself back down to what do you need to do this year to get yourself closer to that goal? What do you need to do this month? What do you need to do this week? So for me, what that looked like was um, I need to, I'll be hundred percent transparent right now. And I had to get my credit better. Um, we had to, we went to, we went to this area in the mountains last year we um, are, have been researching different houses, different kinds of things. So to make a very long story short, we are going the weekend between Christmas and New Year's to look at properties. So had I not had the experience of that dinner, I probably wouldn't have been this close already. There were, um, Carla, for example, she came with, um, this is her book for anybody who has ever seen it. Um, she came with her rough draft of this book and she wanted to do a Ted talk. She, this book, I believe came out, um, within probably within three months of the cruise last year. And she did her Ted talk in February. <clears throat> Denise, Last year, I don't know if you guys have ever, anybody has ever done her journal or her book. Um, 
So her, Denise's big, big life dream is to really be a Rachel Hollis. So she came to dinner dressed as her and um, I believe had the, the, the journal and that journal came out just uh, within a month or two after the cruise. Another woman had written a vegan cookbook. She, that, that is now available on Amazon. So um, they, they they believe that you have to obviously push yourself outside your comfort zone. So <clears throat> Carla had asked us all to participate in a 5k on the, um, on the private island on the last day. And because of my health, I haven't exercised, to be honest, in quite some time. So <coughs> I thought, okay, well, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do as much as I can and just see how it goes. There were a few of us that have never ran before, that ran the whole entire thing. I was able to finish it. It was not a big deal. Um, so the, the, the whole idea being that, you know, oftentimes, and Denise had a little pep talk with us all before we went out and she said, if your legs are hurting, you need to have, you know, some real strong self-talk. You need to talk yourself through it. You need to know that this is mental. It's not physical. Um, the idea being that oftentimes we build up a story about something's hard or something isn't achievable and you can talk yourself out of it before you ever even get started. So it was interesting because after the 5k we did yoga and I've never done yoga before. And let me just tell you that was way harder than the 5k. I had to do a lot more self-talk during that, but, um, anyway, they, they, I don't know how many of you are familiar with Denise's Black Diamond story, but <clears throat> she, um, they both are real big on your words, your words that you say out loud and your thoughts that you have to yourself are super important and they matter. It took Denise and Brandon three years to go Black Diamond. She tells the story that um, when she was three months into doing the 100,000 for three months in a row. And she said out loud to Brandon a couple of times, wouldn't it be funny if we were like $3,000 short next month? Well, guess what happened? She was $3,000 short the next month. So she had to start all over. And that, site, that pattern happened over and over again for three years. It took her three years to get herself to that goal. So once she recognized the pattern, of her thoughts and her words, she changed them. So um, the, other, the other big, big point of this trip is that we all work really, really hard. And while that is good, you also still have to have fun. Like you have to take time out for you. You have to take time out to be silly, um, you know, just, just to play. Like make sure that you're laughing every day. It sounds cheesy, but if you aren't having fun, then, then the work is extra hard. Um, so basically, you know, you have to, whatever your goal, your next immediate goal is, you have to portray yourself and carry yourself as if it has already happened, as if it's already a done deal, cemented into the universe, um, just, just imagine as if you have already achieved it. And that's really my biggest, um, my biggest stuff from the, the cruise. And it's open to everybody next year, whoever wants to go. That's pretty cool. Um, one thing I had written down that I wanted to ask you is events in general. I know you've done a decent amount. I know you're on board with like the next Rachel Hollis conference with us. Mm -hmm. Why would you say in general that events are so important? Like as far as just getting to whether it's an It Works event or a Rachel Hollis event or whatever, but just events in general. I think because if you don't go, now, to be honest, Rachel Hollis obviously is a whole different level than even our own conference. But if you don't get around 
other people that pump you up, like I really feel like you have to do something every couple of months because otherwise it's just work, you know, then you, then you kind of forget why, why you're doing all of the hard things and why you're, you keep pushing, you know, you have to, you, that, that for me personally, that's how I fill myself up. You know, I, I mean, I was going over all of my notes from rise today and I was like, Oh my God, I totally forgot about that. I forgot about that. I forgot about that. You know, I just think that you have to, you have to keep doing those things to keep you going. I agree with that totally. So I went to, it's been a couple months now, but even just to try it that a few of us went to in Philly mm -hmm. and that just hearing those stories and being surrounded by strangers that most of them were not like people that you've seen and idolized. Like when you're at conference, you can pick out 30 people that you've like, they're right. your rock stars, you know, but at this try it, there was like three people that I knew who they were before the night started. If that, and it still filled my cup. Like I've learned and Rachel Hollis weekend just taught me this too. Like that's how I fill my cup. That's the kind of fire that I need to stay close to. I need to be there in person. Mm -hmm. Like reading a book for me doesn't quite do it. Like I need to go there and I need to feel that. And I need to be around more people that are kind of wanting the same thing. It just pushes me like I look around and I'm like, oh my God, there's so many more people like me and I can be this person. You know what I mean? So I think it's absolutely huge. I'm super stoked for conference. I know we have a lot of people going. Um, have you started doing anything? Like I know we talked a lot when we were at the RISE conference about coming home and doing small changes. What do you think you've started to kind of tweak since, and I know you were away again, but what are kind of some of the small changes that you're starting? Yeah. Um, I think, so for me personally, in the very beginning, like I shared with you guys that when I first started, things were a lot different than they are now. So I like doing parties. I have gotten back to that. I, um, you know, I just, it is truly small tweaks here and there that's going to get you where you need to be. If you can, if you can make 1% more effort today than you did yesterday, by next week, you're going to be that much farther ahead. Did that answer your question? Yes. <laughs> so just to go off of that, you guys too, like everybody knows that like my life has been crazy lately. So I decided today, like, the only thing I think I've been consistent with for months through all of this nonsense is hydrate because like I would kick my own grandmother for a bag of hydrate if I needed to. Um, but I decided like, okay, I'm going to start with celery and keto coffee again. And I'm just going to be religious with those again. And I bet I'm going to get awesome results. And I bet I'm going to feel a little bit better. And I bet that little change is going to push me to be like, you know, I bet I could get even better results if I started taking my TFX at lunch again and that kind of thing. Like just little things that you can do each day in your day to keep having a better day the next day. And like, hallelujah, this week it's working for me. Um, really quick before we hop off this page that I happen to open to is a page on sales, but it's everything that I didn't expect to hear from someone that was going to talk to us about how to make sales. So at the top of the page, it, and this is from Dean Graziosi, it was sales 101. Um, the top of my page says enthusiasm and authenticity. And I wrote down as Bevan was talking, you didn't say these exact words, but what I wrote down was show up as your hot mess self, like show up looking like this sometimes on your Facebook and let people relate to you. Like let people relate to the fact that like, oh look, she hasn't washed her hair in three days and that's why it's on the top of her head because I'm a real person and like, that's what they're going to relate to. I also have, um, sell yourself the dream every day. Like if you're not buying the dream, who's going to buy it from you? Sell yourself your dream over and over and over again every day. Eat that shit with your breakfast in the morning and like repeat it until you can't help but believe it. Like pathological liars tell themselves crap all day long and they start to believe it. Tell yourself good stuff all morning long and you'll start to believe it. Like that's just more what I've been trying to do is just feed myself the right thoughts until they kind of start to come more naturally and it's starting to work. Um, 
So he said what the world wants, which I think he said this was from a study. Don't quote me. I don't remember. There's a lot of notes in this book. But he said what the world wants is the real, raw, authentic, transparent you. That's what people are buying. That's what people are after. They're not after a commercial. They're not after, yes, they want results, but like they're looking to buy from you. And I also wrote down, I have to find it again, sorry. And the dog's chasing her tail and distracting me. Oh, for Pete's sake, it's on this page, guys. Oh, people don't buy things they need. They buy things they want. So people are not going to buy something from you because it's good for them. Like I've told people since day one, I don't take the greens because they're healthy for me. I take them because they make my belly flat. Like I want a flat belly. I don't really care how healthy I am. So people are going to buy things that they want. So show them why they want it. Show them how excited you are about the things that are using. Show them what it's doing for you and let them buy into that versus you can have this for blah, 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 and thirty nine ninety five, and like, there's nothing exciting about that anymore. They've heard that spiel. You know what I mean? Um, does anybody else have anything they want to add before we hop off? I, I just want to say it. something real quick, if, if I can. Sure. Um, I love this five-year idea. I'm sorry, you're going to have to excuse my son for a second. Um, the five five-year idea of like, you know, setting that goal, acting like that is where you are, and then taking the steps back, like undoing that and seeing, you know, what you need to be doing today to, to do that. I think that's definitely something like I've lost sight of, especially over just the way this past year has been. Um, I've definitely gotten away from the fire. And I think that like, that is so huge. Like you're saying, like, stay, stay connected, stay close to all of that, because it really does make like the hugest difference. And I just wanted to thank you so much for taking time tonight and, you know, sharing everything with us. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Anybody else have anything they want to say? I'm going to check the chat really quick. Nothing in the chat. Bevan, any final words? Um, I just want to um, piggyback onto what Holly said. Like, and, you know, even if you don't accomplish that goal in five years, even if it takes you seven years, or if you're able to do it in six months, like the, the five years is a general guideline, but also, you know, it can change too, you know, maybe you want to write a book and you get into it and you think that this is the stupidest thing in the world. That's fine. But the, the point is just to be be so crystal clear, especially now going into the new year, everybody's going to be making new dream boards. Be super clear on what it is that you want and what you want to accomplish. And then, you know, break it down into different goals that you can break it down even smaller into daily tasks that will get you closer to it. You know, if it's, if it's, you want to buy a house, then start looking at, at, uh, listings in that area you might decide that you don't want to live there you know the just make small steps towards the big goal i totally agree we are right at 8 30 guys and i don't have anything else written down that i wanted to say so if nobody else says we can hop off thank you so much bevan for hopping on and sharing with us thank you I appreciate it um, and we will see you guys Tuesday night at 8 then. Have a great rest of your week, guys.